Our research question is, local firms, beneficial to give them aid slash support? If you did not know, the government of Singapore gives local industries tax rebates and other benefits. This is not a new practice. Countries such as India practice it as well. In India, information technologies, or IT firms, are given tax holidays to encourage them to be set up and allow them to grow at a faster rate. However, this has both negative and positive effects on the industry as well as the overall being of the country. In this documentary, we will be exploring whether it is beneficial to give local industries aid slash support in Singapore by exploring the pros and the cons to it, and then we will make a conclusion. We will start off with the pros. By giving local industries benefits, setting up industries become much, much easier for locals. They can get into the business faster, faster than they ever could if they went outside Singapore. A lot of these benefits also center on providing expertise and supporting the new industries, not just financially. This way, the new investors learn the ropes of starting an industry faster. Also, most local industries do not go bankrupt easily because they have the know-how to spend their money wisely and get maximum profit from their budding businesses. Um, yeah, yeah, this, this is a yeah. good shop. Hello sir, would you like to buy some of my products? Do I need them? We have plastic, cardboards, rubbers, leathers. Okay, good, do I need them? Yeah, you need them for your Okay. Oh no, I don't have enough money. Uh, here's some money, you need this for your business. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'll take that water bottle. I'll collect the rest later. Okay. As more people get into industries, the economy of a country is boosted as well. Expatriates who have set up industries or are interested in doing so become citizens of Singapore to enjoy the special privileges given to the local industries. One of the most major advantages there is to offering benefits and having more Singaporeans set up industries is that it increases self-sufficiency greatly. The Singaporean government has a goal for self-sufficiency and giving these benefits to encourage business to start helps to reach that goal. By being more self-sufficient, Singapore will become less vulnerable to shortage of resources during hard times all around the world. In times of tribulations, such as during wars, worldwide famines, droughts, etc., Singapore will be able to support itself. Malaysia is going through a water crisis and cannot supply water to Singapore anymore. Singapore does not have a source of water and Singapore's situation looks bleak. Thankfully, Singapore still has new water, purified water from Singapore to support itself. Singapore can survive. With more industries, more employment follows right behind. As the locals set up industries, they will require labor. This labor can be supplied by the locals themselves. The government provides some local expertise as part of their benefits, not to mention the fact that Singapore has a very skilled and specialized workforce, ready to work in industries. We're unemployed. We have wives and children to feed and we have nothing. The situation is basically hopeless. Oh, hi there. I just started a business and I need employees. Would you want to work for me? Of course. Excellent then. Start tomorrow. With greater employment comes increased wealth. Because of lower capital investments and high outputs, profit is also quite high. Employees also get good salaries and the living standard of Singapore is raised. People live in better houses and this creates a better image for Singapore. More people will come to here to visit or maybe even to stay. The economy also improves very quickly because of high profit. Wow, you're fun. You're working really quickly. I think you're going to get a raise. If Irfan gets the raise, I won't. That means I won't even get the promotion. I need to upgrade myself so that I can work better than Irfan and be more efficient. Well, Aga, you're working even faster than Irfan. I think you'll get that raise. And then and maybe a promotion too. This will continue as employees upgrade themselves to remain competitive. Singapore's workforce will get even more skilled and more MNCs will be attracted to Singapore because of her workforce. This will further boost Singapore's image as a hub for commerce. Local and industries become more successful quickly, as we have mentioned in the previous point. Not only does the economy increase, but it also creates an image of Singapore as a business and commerce hub. 
This is not without basis. Singapore is ranked number one in the world as the easiest place to do business. Because of this positive and successful image of Singapore, investors in multinational companies, or MNCs for short, will be attracted to Singapore. So where should we set up our next factory? I think Singapore is a good idea. It's easy to do business and there's no trade restrictions. We've increased by 5% in the last 5 months and we've only been here for 5 months. Investing in Singapore was a good idea. More local industries means cheaper goods for Singaporeans. The transport costs are much reduced, as industries do not need to cross seas to get to their market. They just need to truck for land transport. However, industries such as Nike, Adidas, Timberland, etc., with factories in Thailand, Indonesia, and other Southeast Asian countries further away from Singapore, will need to add transport costs to their already expensive branded products, thus making the retail price very, very high. Ah, ornamental flowers made in Singapore are also shipped to Japan. However, it is much cheaper in Singapore because no shipping costs are factored into the retail price of the plant. However, in Japan, the retail cost must be added to the shipping cost of each plant to give the final price, which will be higher than that of Singapore. That concludes our exploration of the pros of giving local industries benefits. Now we move on to the cons. The first problem that we've managed to come up with is a fundamental one. People generally do not like to go into businesses, whether they are solo or starting it with a group. There is always an uncertainty with setting up industries, no matter how much assistance you have. People do not like having this uncertainty, as it makes them vulnerable. Industries are also very dependent on the market. Even strong businesses can go bankrupt with a few mistakes. A prime example is the Lemon Brothers. They were a very powerful company, and they went bankrupt because of a few wrong choices. After that, we had the economic recession, which led to many industries becoming bankrupt. It is a risky gamble, one which many people think will not pay off in the long run. Singapore also has a very small market. It's a small island above the equator. As such, even though it is a free port and setting up business here is relatively easy, a lot of MNCs will not do so because of the small market. Singapore has a population of only 5 million, very small. MNCs could always move to countries with bigger populations, such as China and India, the two biggest markets in the world. Theoretically speaking, they will earn much more there than by setting up an industry in Singapore. Singapore is called the little red dot for a reason. Singapore's the best place to do business in the world. But it's so small. What do you mean? It's only about a population of 5 million. Even if it's easy to do business, that market is really small. Compared to India and China, you might spend more money in setting up, but you got a much bigger market. Also, by providing benefits, a lot of industries might get dependent on it. Industries, when exposed to tariffs and taxes, sometimes cannot cope. They do not know how to cope with the increased monetary inputs and a lot of times may be even driven bankrupt. Now that we've shown you both the pros and the cons to giving benefits to local industries in Singapore, we will now draw a conclusion. So here we go. Drum roll, please. And our conclusion is that it is beneficial to give local industries aid or support. We feel that the pros outweigh the cons. Even though there is some risk in the government providing money to the local industries for setting up, it is worth it. Singapore also has a free port, which is very conducive for business. Self-sufficiency is increased and that makes Singapore less vulnerable. Singapore also has many achievements to her name. She is the world's easiest place to do business, as we have said before. The world leader in investment potential, ranked first for having the most open economy in the world and has the best business environment in the world. Singapore's specialized workforce also gets a lot of awards. It maintains top position in Barry's labor force evaluation measure. This evaluation consists of surveying the workforce's legal framework, relative productivity, worker attitude and technical skills. Singapore's workforce is rated as having a consistently productive workforce. Singapore is also one of the top three in the world for most skilled labor. With so many rankings to her name, it can be seen that Singapore is a very, very good place to do business. These rankings just further prove the point that we think is right, that giving aid to local industries affects Singapore in a positive way and does not affect it in a negative way. We realize that a documentary is not that competent. One of our major problems was the time constraint. We could only speak for up to 12 minutes. Most competent documentaries are up to 40 minutes or longer. 
Also, we did not interview any businessmen, local and or foreign, about their experience doing business in Singapore and how it is compared to other countries, if they did go to other countries. In fact, we did not ask for any professional input from people who have been out there in the field of business and realize what it is like to do business. If we had included that, it would have been a better documentary. However, we were once again limited by time constraints, as including both the interview and the points would have overshot the time limit by a lot. We felt that it was better for us to just show the points then, because we felt that the points were very necessary for our presentation and were required in our documentary. Also, the quality of our movie clips are not that good, as none of us really had a very good video camera. We had to make do with what we had, so we just used the best camera we had. Looking back at our props, they could have been more imaginative as well, but we feel that we still tried our very best with what we had and we are proud of our work.